Hello everyone, welcome to another TV episode review. Today we'll be taking a look at a Disney animated series, one of the best. Possibly my favorite, although that's up to debate because I have quite a few that are my favorites. But this is one that I did grow up on. This is Kim Possible, season one, episode one. It's called Crush, and uh, it's pretty awesome. It does hold up. Um, yeah, uh, so the story is pretty simple. Um, we're kind of introduced to Kim, Possible, and then we have Ron Stoppable, who is her best friend. And they fight crime together. They also attend high school, and the high school is called Middleton High, and so Middleton is the, the town where they're at, and so there's, I believe there's Upperton and Lowerton as well. It's kind of an interesting, like, naming of cities, but yeah, so Middleton High School, that's where Kim attends, and Ron as well, and so this particular uh, week at school, the Spirit Week dance is announced, so that is what's happening. And so that's the latest event at the school. And so usually with these type of things, Ron and Kim go together, like as friends, like best friends, you know, like that kind of thing. Uh, however, there happens to be this new guy called Josh Mankey, who in this episode is voiced by Brecken Meyer. In later appearances, his voice actor changes. So yeah, I don't know if you care, but <laughs> that's just what I found out. Anyway, Josh Mankey is the guy that you're seeing on this screenshot uh, from the episode. Um, he is this kind of really popular guy that all the girls love, all the cheerleaders, everyone, you know, is in love with Josh Mankey. And they're all trying to get him to go to the dance with them. And he's pretty much like turning down all of them. And so Kim is trying to have her shot. And she's very, very scared to ask him because she she doesn't do that well with boys in general. Like, she's not that confident when she talks to guys. So this is kind of um, a big thing for her. And um, it's extremely adorable the way that this plays out and the animation. <laughs> it's very endearing um, and also very relatable, I'm sure, to many of us asking someone to go on a date or go to a dance or something it's probably really um relatable and so all throughout the episode she's trying to get him to go to the dance with her she's trying to ask him in the hallway and she gets trampled by all these other students and then he disappears and then she tries to ask him after class that doesn't work and then she tries to ask him in the gym and he's painting a um a banner for the dance and then she actually so uh, a little bit later after that, she practices one of her cheerleading routines with the other girls, and that does not go well. <laughs> that does not go well. She ends up falling onto the banner and ruining Josh's work, and then by that point, she gets a call from Wade. Wade's the, he's the guy that gives Kim her missions, so he's like the guy that um, lets them go on missions, so he's a 10-year-old tech genius. He, uh, it, Kim, has this device called a communicator, a communicator. You probably get it. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a jokey thing. And that's like her phone, pretty much, kind of. It's like before the phones were a big thing. So, yeah. Um, that's like her mission device. So whenever it goes, boop, boop, beep, it's just like, that's like a bad one, but that's like the little sound that comes from that. And so whenever that happens, then that's the mission. That's like a mission alert. And so by this point, um, the, the communicator alerts Kim to another mission, and Wade gives her a mission, and this one is, is different. Dr. Draken has returned, and so he is Kim's arch nemesis, pretty much. I mean, Shigo is, um, his second in command. She, she's like the fighter, and she's like the green, you know, you might know who Shigo is. We'll get more into her with her, like, analysis. She's really cool. Um, uh, but Shigo doesn't play a huge part in this episode, but Dr. Draken is invading a uh, Japan toy factory called the Nakasumi Toy Factory in, I believe it's in Tokyo, I could be wrong, but yeah, and they go to Japan, Kim hitches a ride from one of her friends who is a pop star named Brittina, yeah, and she's like basically a pop star singer, and she's a big friend, she's a 
a big um, friend of Kim's, and so she lets them tag along on her private jet. She flies them to Japan. Then they infiltrate the toy factory. And what Draken is trying to do is trying to steal all of this um, like robotic technology. And it's actually, and there's this really funny thing where Ron thinks that Draken is trying to steal Christmas because he's stealing video game technology. And so Kim thinks it's just him taking over the world, which he's, she's right. And then they have this back and forth throughout the whole episode where, where Kim thinks it's him taking over the world. And then Ron thinks it's him taking over Christmas, which it's actually both. So that's interesting. And so Kim has a big fight with Shigo and, and uh, Draken's henchmen, and they all get defeated. But Kim rescues the workers. There were two workers that were trapped in there. And um, there's another funny thing with that. Um, I won't spoil that, because that's a funny part. Um, there's a lot of comedy with this show. Um, but she saves Kim saves the workers, but she can't save Draken getting away with the factory. He gets away with the entire factory. And he just, like, there's a bunch of helicopters. It's really cool. And so he gets away laughing maniacally. And so back at Middleton High, after that, Kim is kind of a little bit disappointed. She didn't, she wasn't able to save, um, you know, the, the factory and the tech. So before, actually, I should probably mention, there is a scene where Kim is talking about Josh with her family and the boys, her brothers, Jim and Tim are, are very, they're very buggy brothers. You probably know the type where if you like, they're teasing her about her um her boyfriend Josh Mankey it's like one of the funniest things she just get, keeps getting teased over and over and her mom actually gives her really good advice she says that asking a boy out is like taking a plunge into cold water like a cold pool and she says you gotta take just take a deep breath take the plunge and that's actually what helps her at the end but anyway um in Middleton High uh, Kim is still attempting to ask Josh. <laughs> it's really funny. Um, it's like Bonnie is, uh, all, even Bonnie gets, um, she gets rejected. So she's like, Kim, you're going to fail. No one likes you. You're such a loser. And then, um, at the very end, he, he actually agrees to go with her. But before that, um, they then leave because Wade contacts her. And so, Draken is at a uh, snowy mountain base in the Alpines, I believe. And so he, he kind of moving, he moved bases. And so she beats Shigo and Draken again. It's a bit more involved. This fight is a little bit more action packed this time. Um, so Ron is there as well. And Ron is fighting Draken and Kim is fighting Shigo. And then this big old battle was happening. It's really cool. But then Draken reveals his, his true evil plan is to activate the tech to make the the technology become a giant robot. And so it's like this big red robot. And what's funny is the chest can talk. And it, it keeps saying, Konnichiwa. It's like this really ridiculous thing that's happening. And so uh, eventually Kim is able to Empire Strikes Back the robot by tripping it up with, the, with her grappling hook, which is pretty sweet. And... Um, that basically takes care of the robot. Um, but then um, Wade is able to hack into the back of the robot. And so that is what um, overrides it. And so the robot is pretty much destroyed. And then ja Draken and Shigo end up getting away to plot their next plot. And um, yeah, that's pretty much how it ends. Um, and then Kim finally asks Josh. She is super nervous just like super scared and then at the very end she takes her mom's advice and goes for it and she ends up going to the dance with him at the end and what's really funny is ron ends up getting locked inside the the closet for whatever reason and she locks him kim locks him in there and then he's he's while the dance is happening he's stuck in the closet saying somebody let me let me out of here and that's that's how it ends um, I think this is one of the best episodes. It, it was very enjoyable, in my opinion. It's got great action, great character moments, great animation, great music. Like, it's just great. Like, I, I just really enjoyed this. 
Um, and after so long of me not watching Kim Possible, it kind of brought back the memories. It was very enjoyable for me uh, because I really loved this show as a kid. I probably love it more now because I, I'm an adult now. <laughs> I can I can understand a lot of the other references too. So it's kind of cool. Um, my favorite moment of this episode, honestly, uh, it, there's a lot of good moments. My favorite part probably would have to be the plane ride with Bertina. That was just really cool to me. I don't know. I think it's the first time that Kim gets a ride from someone. I, I at least on screen. It, I could be wrong. There could be other episodes that go before this, but um, that's the first time I saw it. But yeah, this is great. Um, the robot's cool. Action's cool. We don't see a lot of Shigo, but we do see more of her later, so that's cool. And I, I think probably the best, like, thing to come out of this episode is, um, like, Kim asking, the the running gag of her asking Josh, and she just keeps failing. It's, like, both cute, and then it's also very kind of sad, like, at the same time. But at the very end, they get to go to the dance. So that's, that's cool. Um, this is a great episode, great start. Um, and it's just really fun. It sets up like all the different moments that will happen throughout the show, which is nice. And yeah, Ron helps her out and Wade's cool. And, uh, Draken is evil as always. And, um, it's just a great episode. I, I don't have any problems with it. Great, it's a great introduction. <laughs> so yeah, I probably, after this point, I most likely, I think I'll just review my top 10 favorite episodes. I think this definitely goes in there. It's not my favorite episode, but it's one of them. I have to watch the whole series, and then I will pick my 10 favorites, and then I'll review those individually. Um, so I hope you'll join me for that. Thank you so much for watching this. If you liked it, what did you think of Crush? Did you love this episode? Did you like it or hate it? Let me know what you think of Kim Possible in general. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. I'll see you in the next review and have a great day.